The ISIS hostage triangle, I'll call it, that involved a Japanese journalist, a, a terrorist, as well as a Jordanian uh, pilot, has taken an, uh, taken an interesting twist, uh, a, a delay, if you will. We're going to discuss that coming up. In the meantime, here's what the White House had to say. How is what the Jordanians are talking about doing any different than what the United States did to get the release of Bergdahl? releasing prisoners held at Guantanamo Bay to the Taliban, which is clearly a terrorist organization. Sure. Uh, as you know, uh, this was highly discussed um, at the time, and prisoner swaps are a traditional end of conflict um, uh, interaction that, ha that happens. Um, as the war in Afghanistan wound down, um, we felt like it was the appropriate thing to do. And the White House trying to backpedal a little bit on prisoner exchanges uh, that happened. Uh, the conversation went a little bit further in that they said that Taliban wasn't a terrorist organization, long and short. But regardless, and we're sitting in a situation where there's a Jordanian, Jordanian uh, pilot uh, that's being held captive, a Japanese uh, journalist, and one of his associates has already been uh, beheaded, presumably uh, dead, and then an, uh, a terrorist as well. So joining us, uh, Robert Spencer is the director of Jihad watch Robert it's getting to be a complicated situation with lots of ramifications isn't it yes it is well this is because the Islamic State keeps changing its demands first it wanted 200 million then there was the deal that they would release the Jordanian pilot and presumably also the Japanese hostage in exchange for this jihad mass murderer Sajida Arashawi but now they're saying you have to release Sajida by uh, what was it midnight or uh, the Jordanian pilot will be killed, with no mention whatsoever that they're going to release anybody. Uh, I am right. Now, the situation in Jordan, though, seems to be, from the reports I've read, that there's broad support to do this exchange. Are you hearing the same things? Yeah, absolutely. And that's, of course, because there's broad support for the kind of jihad attacks that Sajida Arishwawi has, has been responsible for. And so they figure, well, she shouldn't be in prison anyway and uh, they can get the pilot back and right this wrong and everybody's happy. The problem is this is somebody who's a trained killer. She has killed many people and she would almost certainly kill many more if she's released. Okay, so that's the, that's the hard part. So the Americans can't support it even though they've done exchanges in the past. Well, you know, the exchanges in the past were not very well advised either. I mean, look, Bo Bergdahl is reportedly about to be charged with desertion. And so, and, and of course, as soon as the exchange was announced for Bergdahl, that it, all his, uh, his comrades in the military, in the division that he was in, began to come out with these stories saying they knew he was a deserter, they knew he had converted to Islam and joined the Taliban, and now uh, they, the United States exchanged five trained jihad terror leaders back to the Taliban for him, and now he's going to be charged with desertion. You got to wonder what the, what was that all about? Except as part of Obama's ongoing uh, attempt to empty Guantanamo out entirely and close it down. Yeah, and the, but the Americans are saying, "Do as I say, and not as I do." In that particular case, where, where are the Japanese in this whole equation? They've said that they won't pony up the money, but where else? Yeah, well, they seem to be open to the idea of a prisoner exchange. And I think that is just as ill-advised as giving the Islamic State money. Uh, look, it's demonstrable that uh, European governments, by paying ransoms for hostages, have essentially been financing Al-Qaeda. And the Islamic State wants in on that action. They wanted hundreds of millions for James Foley. Now they wanted 200 million for the Japanese hostages and the Jordanian pilot. And the thing is that uh, it's, it's wise of governments to stop giving in to those demands. But if they exchange these prisoners, then the effect is even worse. Because, as I say, Sajida Arishawi, Rishawi is very likely to kill again. And so how many more people are going to be killed just to secure the release of these hostages? Well, in fact, Robert, it's kind of tragically ironic that France is one of the people that has been paying uh, ransoms. Yeah, absolutely. So France has been financing, essentially, the jihad that struck them so forcefully in the last few weeks. And no question about it. Robert, we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back and continue this discussion. We're not going to say okay to terrorists and just bend to their threats. The United States is not going to do that. The, com the government of Jordan is not going to do that. We need to degrade and defeat ISIL so that this is not a threat that is facing uh, the world in the future. So, no, we can't as governments bend to their threats, but we can have compassion for the pain and suffering of, of families around the world.
Yeah, that shuffling here is the White House and the, the Americans backpedaling a little bit on some of the statements they've made in the past. Robert Spencer is still with us. Robert, here's the thing that I'm looking at. I'm looking at, you know, we know there's a problem in Syria and that's ongoing. Iraq, a problem ongoing. There are all kinds of players, big players in the area, Saudi Arabia, uh, Israel, uh, Iran, Turkey. But the one that's in the focus right now is Jordan, to my way of thinking. Where do they stand? Are they stable right now? Jordan is uh, stable, but it's, it's right on the edge. What we have in Jordan is, of course, the uh, kingdom that has been there for decades. And there are the pressures in Jordan from groups like the Muslim Brotherhood and also sympathizers with the Islamic State to overthrow the monarchy and to establish an Islamic State there, a Sharia-ruled government. And so far, the kingdom has been able to deal with these, uh, these elements pretty well. But there are whole towns, whole cities that have declared open sympathy for the Islamic State within Jordan. And uh, these quarters are going to be heard from. The Islamic State, of course, is right next door and has designs on the whole region. They've announced, they've even published maps where uh, Jordan is part of their uh, so-called caliphate. And so uh, the Jordanians have to tread very carefully in regard to this. If they don't, for example, release Sajida al-Arashawi, Ar then they might face significant protests within Jordan itself. And that is a factor that they have to take into consideration. So the probability is that they will release her. It's just a question of when? Yeah, I think so. A question of when and how. They want to secure that they get the pilot back safely. And, of course, the Japanese are hoping that they will also be able to free their hostage. And all these things are up in the air now with the latest from the Islamic State, which offers absolutely nothing in return for Sajida. Well, uh, other than the two prisoners that they've got currently. No, they, they didn't offer anything. In the last communique, they said, you have to release her by midnight or we will kill the pilot. They didn't say anything about releasing anybody. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's hardly a negotiation then if only one party is speaking. Well, yeah, but that's the way it is with Islamic supremacists. It's all unilateral. You do their bidding or they will kill you. That's how they operate. They're, not, uh, they're into negotiations if they can see that they work to their own advantage, but only then. Does it work to their advantage if they kill the pilot and there's an uprising? Uh, you're, you're talking uh, about Jordan as if it's uh, at the breaking point. If there's an uprising in Jordan... That is a consideration that they also have to take into account. But they also operate according to another principle that's enunciated in the Quran, the, that the, res, the believers have the responsibility to strike terror into the hearts of the enemies of Allah. And that's chapter 8, verse 60 of the Quran. And so they may be calculating that by killing the pilot, they'll frighten the Jordanians into submission rather than cause them to rise up in anger. Is there loyalty um, within Jordan to the king, especially amongst the military forces? Oh, Are certainly they there is. likely to be spooked, for instance? Uh, no, I don't think that the military forces will be. I think that they're hoping that the people will be and that that will shake the uh, monarchy's loyalty, its base, among the people, and that then they can exploit that. Yeah, so there's, for them, uh, there's nothing to be lost, if you will, by killing the pilot. Oh, absolutely. That's right. I mean, it may be that they'll calculate that they'll do better in Jordan in the long run if they let him go. And see, these are the, the, the possibilities under Islamic law. Islamic law says if you take a hostage, you can kill him, you can ransom him in a trade for money or another prisoner, you can enslave him or free him outright. And you do what's best for Islam. You make the decision on that basis. So the Islamic State operates strictly according to Islamic law. They're going to make the decision to free their hostages or kill them based on what they think will be to their advantage in the long run. But we have to get over in the West the idea that they're thinking the way we are with humanitarian considerations. That means nothing to them. And their considerations of real politic are quite different from ours because they are not afraid to use terror. And in fact, they are commanded, in their view, to use terror as a means to gain power and hold it. Okay, now apply the same principles. I, I, I now get where you're going with the Jordanian um, uh, pilot. Apply the same principles with the Japanese uh, uh, journalist. Well, it's the same thing with him, really that uh, they will free him if it's to their advantage. They wanted money. It doesn't look as if they're going to get money. And so then they want the exchange of the prisoner. If they believe that they cannot get Sajida al-Rishawi without freeing K 
Kenji Goto, then they'll free him. But if they think that they can get away with getting Sejita without freeing Kenji, then he will likely be killed. Because that also will strike terror into the hearts of the enemies of Allah. Okay, then uh, what will the global response be? I mean, the Japanese obviously will, will uh, respond appropriately. Where will the Americans respond, do you think? I, I think that the Islamic State knows that Barack Obama is not going to do anything significant against it. Uh, there will be more airstrikes. There will be more angry rhetoric but there won't be anything effective done. He does not want to get involved in another ground war in Iraq after making it a linchpin of his presidency to get us out of one. Yeah, I suspect you were right, Robert. Thank you so much. Uh, you shed a lot of light on this situation. Appreciate it. Thank you. Robert Spencer joining us. He's a director of Jihad Watch. He knows the inner workings of how that all works.